Ready when you are. Open. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Got a special event today. We are up just outside of Butler, Missouri. Me, baby Brooks, and the wife, Marissa. I made a special trip up here for a good friend of mine. His name's Noah Gibson. Noah is, besides myself, is another guy that has started a YouTube channel. Channel he's already started. He's got several videos out there. I think maybe uh, 17 or so. But Noah came and visited me uh, a couple months ago and came all the way down to our farm to see how everything was going so we are here to kind of show you Noah's story Noah raised bison I don't know about seven years ago or so and he completely got out had to uh, change the plans in life and, and whatnot just how life happens he got out of raising bison and now he's ready to get back in he missed being around these animals so much he's been working on oh what's wrong He's been working hard on getting his pens ready and building new fence and all kinds of stuff. You can go back and watch some of his videos of prepping for the bison. Um, he's located in Kansas. So we're not actually very far from his farm, maybe an hour and a half. So we're in, at the Mocan Livestock Market just outside of Butler, Missouri. And we are going to film Noah purchasing uh, his first animals for his herd. He's gonna start raising bison again. I'm really excited for Noah and his family. They're gonna be here for the journey. Brooks is excited. Noah was asked to judge this morning <clears throat> for the sale. So there's a show and a sale, um, and it's just kind of lumped into one deal. You can go back and see some of my videos of how the show and the sale goes down as well. And uh, it'll be fun being a part of Noah's journey. And we're gonna take these animals all the way back to his farm in Kansas, and we're gonna release his first herd of animals back on his farm so we're gonna go in here and look around I think the judging is over with and we're gonna go see Noah and inch introduce Noah to you guys and uh, we're gonna go take a look at the animals inside the barn what do you think <laughs> See those bison? Huh? This is a huge facility. It's awesome. This place is huge. It's one of the biggest cell barns I've been to. And uh, I don't know exactly how many bison are here today, but there's quite a few. A little bit more than our Oklahoma cell. This cell typically has, I heard, over 250 animals. Um, but I think there's supposed to be 150 at this sale this year. So, but there's, this is a really cool facility and, uh, we're going to go down here and these catwalk is awesome. It's a safe way to look at the animals up above, get a different view, but, uh, we're going to go down and take a look at them now. Got you one. Yeah. Okay, this is Don Norman. 
Nice dark. Right here they are. You have to pull it up 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half. Half all done. 11 and a half. I'm going to go internet. You're out. It's going to be 11 and a half. 11 and a half. I'm going to be 11 and a half. I'm going to be 11 and a half. I'm going to be 11 and a half. So I'm going to be 11 and a half. So I'm going to be 11 and a half. Put them on 7. 76. Okay. I'm 25. I'm going to be 2 and a half. I'm going to be 22 and a half. I'm going to be 25. I'm going to be 5. And now 7 and a half. I'm going to be 3,000. I'm going to be 3,000. I'm going to be 2 and a half. And now 35. I'm going to be 35. I'm going to be 35. I'm going to be 2 and a half. 5, 7 and a half. And now 4,000. I'm going to be 10, 10 and a half. I'm going to be 10, 10 and a half. All right, Noah. So what'd you get? We got uh, four heifers. Four heifers. All right. Yeah. So we're thinking about getting. Um, four to six animals right. and thinking about getting a bull but we ended up holding off on the bull and got four heifers today so then it's been seven years right it's been five years five years S seven years since i started seven years since noah started raising bison and he's been ready and excited to get back to it again you think you missed him didn't you a little bit just <laughs> a little bit he's two cool animals awesome we're, animals we're very excited yeah well that's good noah's family was here and marissa and i and brooks were here and I'm excited for Noah and his family to get back to raising these bison again. And the cool part about it is he gets to do it with his family and, and kids and it's uh gets to get back in it. So and you know Noah's I mean how old are you Noah? Uh, twenty well, twenty three, yeah. Thirty three. <laughs> Noah's years. close to my age, so it's good to see, you know, the young blood is what the older guys call it, um, in this generation. So it's fun to have Noah around. To, uh, we can kind of do all this stuff together as a as a brotherhood and a friendship. So I'm glad that we're here. Right, let's get her loaded up. They got one hell of a house. Come through and uh, lift this up. <laughs> <laughs> that a clap. <laughs> Better, uh, you, is that the right ones? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, they are. We'll make sure they're good looking heifers. Noah did a good job. Right. It's always important to start out with good animals when you're raising bison, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I uh, had a long conversation with Doc Parsons on that, on the genetics. Um, he was talking about how it goes from, he had a really, really good bull and it cut down his time going to the butcher from three years to 18 months. Wow. Um, so it's really something I've been trying to kind of focus on is good quality animals. It's one thing that I learned was when you start off, you gotta do, get the best because um, it's, it all that's where it all stems from when you start raising these animals right now right yeah right buffalo are fairly easy to raise um once you know what you're doing but if you uh start on the wrong foot it makes it even harder yeah so yeah um, it does doing everything you can to get good quality animals will set yourself up for uh future success yes like noah and i we always learning from the older guys that have been in the business for 30 years peter cole gerald parsons those guys we try to listen to them as much as possible noah's got a good relationship with peter cole up here in missouri and of course i'm close to doc parsons but try to learn from those guys as much as possible but um but you know just like noah and i young guys there's a lot of people out there that are getting started in this and we encourage people to do that so that's why we're bringing you on this journey 
uh, a guy like Noah. Now he has had experience with bison before, like I've said before. A little bit. A little bit of experience, <laughs> but he's, uh, so he's already a little bit a step ahead. He's done research and he's talked to producers that have been in a while. And so this is a step ahead for Noah and I'm just excited for him to do this. And like I said, we can call, all do this together. We share ideas, um, problems that we go through with bison and um, kind of share our story yeah. pretty much yeah. and uh, our journey through this. And it starts right here with these four heifers. He didn't have a bull, but you know, when you've got heifers like this, he start his, his foundation herd or his conservation herd is what I like to call and then he can get a bull and he can be pretty selective just like we're talking about good genetics and those sort of things Noah will eventually pick out a good bull right at, at some point and he'll have opportunities to do that as well so that he can grow his herd just like me I started three years ago it takes a it takes a while it, takes it does a minute with bison so but okay what are we doing next we're heading home and uh, we're Release them into a corral and we'll keep them in the corral for a week or two. Get them to calm down a little bit and uh, feed them a little bit of range cubes. Get them used to me and then from there they'll be out on pastures. Boom. So this is this is the start. And it's a good timing because uh, he's going to bring them home like I've always talked about. Put them in a home base and and then what the grass is already starting to grow around here. Right. And he's located in southeast Missouri. Sorry, he's located in southeast Kansas. And pretty soon it'll be perfect timing for these uh, ladies to get out on on the grass and do what they do what they do best. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, this is southeast Kansas, and they were made for this area. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this whole plains area, uh, especially even where Dusty's at, this is this is where they thrive. Yep, that's exciting. All right, well. Let's get them home. We're, Marissa and I and Brooks are gonna follow Noah and his family. And uh, we're gonna follow the trailer back to his home and we're gonna release them there. All right, let's go Ready? release some buffalo. All right, let's go. Ready when you are. Open. There it goes. Ready when you are. Open. There it goes. Ready when you are. Ladies, come on, girls. Come on, come on, girls. Alright guys, we made it back to Noah's 
farm here and got the heifers released got them temporarily in a, a corral gonna keep them here this is a home base just for a little bit he's already got some hay out for him they got a spring how cool is that got some water flowing right here some fresh water for him he's gonna have them in here for uh about two weeks or so maybe yeah, that's the goal that's the goal let them get used to the environment new smells new land new grass all that good stuff new people and what i like about these heifers whenever you go and select um your animals or you go to purchase animals these these heifers are calm they didn't even hardly move around in the trailer they were they they're pretty calm animals and that's awesome that's easier for him and his family when they go to take care of them but one thing that i noticed out here is we always talk about fencing you've seen how much i work out i do on fencing and all that stuff but um notice this here this is a little bit different but i want noah to talk about his electric fence system that he's been working on this for a while now and you can see we're we're in kansas it's wide open grassland country just perfect for these bison but he's he's got this going and it I, I like what he's doing you want no you want to tell us about what what you did here and how how you built your fence and stuff yeah so um this is high tensile uh, electrified fence um originally this kind of came out of new zealand before i got buffalo i looked into trying to figure out what was going to be the optimal fence for buffalo um some guys just like dusty they've got uh, barbed wire which works great um, if your fences are taut if your buffalo are respecting to it um, any fence I don't care who you are any fence um, can be tested by buffalo if it's not in proper order or the animals don't respect it so there's a lot of different processes with fencing but the way I really like to go with it is um, electric fence and if you go with an electric fence um, the high tensile is really where it's at. Um, one strand of this high tensile is really, really strong. Cost on this high tensile is cheaper than barbed wire. Uh, yep. So like barbed wire for a good roll, you can look at 100 to uh, $120 a yep. roll for a quarter, quarter mile um, roll. This here for top of the line, you're looking at 170,000 PSI and you're at a hundred bucks for 4,000 feet. Same amount of strands, six strands. And the other thing that you'll save on is doing T-posts. Rule of thumb is about 30 feet apart on the T-posts. Um, you know, given ditch, ditches, you can go uh, a little bit more, a little bit less, but that's, that's one thing you'll save. Uh, one cost you'll have is the insulators. Um, which is not that high of a cost. Um, and then you'll have your charger. Yep. But all in all, um, it's a really low maintenance fence to build. One of the really good aspects about it is if you have, let's say a tree fall on it, um, since these posts are 30 foot apart, a lot of times what will happen is tree will take down this fence all the way to the ground you can cut the tree up and literally the fence will pop back, back up for itself. Yeah. Um, and if it doesn't, uh, taking and retightening it or putting on new insulators is really not that bad at all. I talked to somebody who had a whole car plow through their fence Jeez. and took them about 10 minutes to fix it. You do have to train these animals to respect yeah. hot wire. That's one thing you really need to think about. Um, these animals were bought at auction and unless i know exactly where they came from i don't know if they're um are familiar with hot wire and know what the, what yeah. what it is so i don't want them to be introduced about with it and freak out and try to get out yeah. so i want to introduce it to them slowly i'll put a hot wire in there w when they have a controlled environment with the corral and then uh they'll be able to figure out what it is and and then uh from there really for the rest of their life they'll understand what it is and they'll respect it all right yeah so they'll just be in here for a couple weeks like i said and then he's going to let them out here and transition and then um they'll be started to get used to this and is what noah's talking about and a lot of people do this um part of their pasture rotations they use a lot of this um electric fencing but that'll be another story i won't be here for that but 
you guys can go check Noah out at Broken Arrow Bison. Um, I'm sure you'll be filming I the process of, of everything. And this is a beginner stage. You guys didn't really get to catch me in my beginner stage when I brought mine home a long time ago. I was way too embarrassed to film myself and a lot of people had to talk me into it to where I'm at now. But um, you'll be able to catch that. Noah's gonna let them out. And that's the fun part is letting them out getting them some grass right here at the beginning of we're about to get in the summer which is what bison do well and and that's out there grazing the grass so so cool what's next noah for you i mean well really we're just looking at growing the herd um this is just the beginning we yeah. need these are four heifers we need a bull and um probably either over over the summer we're going to be buying more animals and or this fall we're going to be buying more animals and really just Every six months to the year, we're gonna be buying more. Um, this is a, a beginning stage of a large scale bison herd, believe it or not. You gotta start somewhere. Yep. We are actually going to go, Noah and his family are gonna feed us some food and um, we're gonna let these ladies settle down for a little bit and uh, kind of get used to their new home. And then uh, Marissa and Brooks and I are gonna head home back to Oklahoma because we miss seeing our bison. But um, I just want to thank Noah for letting us or asking us to be a part of this and um, coming all the way up here to Missouri. We had a dinner last night, um, a buyer's dinner, and we were able to sit down in the meeting for the Missouri Bison Association. It was cool meeting some good people and hanging out with Noah. And then he actually judged this morning for your first time. I did. Yeah. Well, that's quite an accomplishment and you can learn a lot from judging other people's animals and stuff so um, good experience for him and you know get to come out here and raise these awesome animals so thank you Noah for letting us be a part of this journey with you and your family and that we're excited for you and we'll we'll be in touch and we'll uh, we'll talk about all the things that we do differently and that we try to you know learn from each other and i'm sure we'll keep up with all that fun stuff well i really want to thank you for driving you bet five six hours up here <laughs> to uh yep. be able to film this um yeah it's really exciting for us we've been uh really anticipating this for like about the past five years i know so this is just something that's we are ecstatic Good. to get back on track with uh raising these majestic animals absolutely so thank you for uh doing what you do you bet man and i'm i'm glad noah reached out to me and has several times to come and uh to our farm and check check it out when he came back and interviewed me and so this is how it all starts and you guys can do this too so if you have any questions you can reach out to know or i um, like i said go check him out there's not very many many of us on youtube um but uh noah's another guy just like myself that branched out there and, and want to do something different for the for the bison world uh, because we just really love and appreciate these animals thank you guys for watching and if you haven't subscribed to us check no out at broken arrow bison thank you guys for following us